Uh, Cl Clapham can be a pretty liberated place. Think Drinkathon on a Saturday night. <laughs> Think Usain Bolt walking the walk of shame after one of those nights. But Clapham actually has a quite different a story of, of liberty and change. Now, what links logos, campaigners, <laughs> slavery, religion, and school maths? And the answer is Clapham. And it's that story of liberty that I want to tell you today. Just over 200 years ago, Clapham was a village on the edge of London and people were, were starting to build grand new houses around the, the common. That's one of them there. And the people who lived in these houses were angry. And they were angry about slavery and the slave trade. And they focused that anger on a campaign that changed the world. Now, William Wilberforce is the name that every, everybody knows. In 1789, as a young and thrusting MP, uh, the year of the French Revolution, he made his first speech in the House of Commons uh, seeking to abolish the slave trade. And in 1790, he moved to, to Clapham and he became, the, if like, the poster boy of the anti-slavery movement. His cousin was Henry Thornton, who already lived uh, at Clapham. Thornton was a wealthy uh, merchant banker. And uh, there's a whole host of people. This man, James Stephen, uh, he was a, a lawyer. He, he'd worked in Barbados. He'd seen uh, inhumanity at, at close uh, quarters and, and vowed to fight it. And uh, Granville Sharp, uh, he had been the person who had actually started the whole thing. In 1772, he brought a test case in law that set down the principle that slavery could not exist in Britain. And he was instrumental in founding Sierra Leone as a West African colony for freed slaves. And Zachary Walton was the first governor of Sierra Leone and he came to Clapham to establish a school for, for boys from the colony. Hannah Moore was a writer of moral tracts and pretty sugary prose that they were too, but she fought and fought. And uh, the Reverend John Venn was rector of Holy Trinity Church, Clapham, on the common, the church you, you probably walked past to get here. And so all these people, and the, there, there were many more living around Clapham Common, were in and out, out of each other's houses, setting up campaigns, writing letters, making things happen. And there were other people who came here to Clapham to meet them and join them in the struggle. Olodia Equiano was himself a freed slave. His sensational autobiography was a publishing phenomenon. He toured the country telling people what it was like to be a slave. John Newton uh, was a city of London clergyman. Uh, he wrote the hymn Amazing Grace, and you may not know that's actually an anti-slavery song. And Thomas Clarkson was one of the very, f very first people uh, who actually set up the abolition committee in the late 1770s. So all these people fighting together. So the slave trade itself was, was one of the most lucrative aspects. It underpinned uh, the Georgian economy, the, the, the triangular trade between Africa, the Caribbean, and the British Isles. And that uh, the scale of it was enormous. In the co course of time, millions of blacks uh, transported across the Atlantic. And they re re recruited Josiah Wedge Wedgwood, the, the pottery pioneer, to, to provide a logo and a slogan. Am I not a man and a brother? And that was the visual symbol of their campaign. 
William Blake brought his searing vision. And Granville Sharp commissioned this series of engravings that, that struck horror into the hearts of the British people, showing a slave ship with, with, with people in the hold, nose to tail, for the duration of the passage across the Atlantic. And so, gradually, the storm of protest grew, all these different ways of showing what was going on and how horrific it was. Time and again, uh, there, were, there were attempts in Parliament and the vested interests beat the abolitionists back. And finally, they got there. The House of Commons uh, heard many debates in which some people claimed that black men and women from Africa were not properly human, that slavery was a natural c condition. But the power of argument finally won the day. After victory over Napoleon at sea in 1807, the slave trade was abolished. And they had won, but they had won that battle, but the next fight was to abolish the institution of slavery itself. And in 1833, as William Wilberforce lay dying, Parliament passed the act to abolish the slave trade within the British Empire. So they had actually, through all these means that, that we can recognize as a classic uh, PR campaign today, logos, slogans, uh, pressure groups, uh, um, PR, they actually managed with religious fervor behind them to engineer the change. And the school maths. Uh, John Venn was the rector of, of Clapham. His grandson, John Venn, was the Cambridge mathematician who gave his name to set theory and the Venn diagram. And that's the perfect expression of what we have here today. Because Clapham changed the world. Thank you.